the Stephen Van Hoe Foundation has helped us over several years now and has really been instrumental in conducting this clinical trial and without them we would not have been able to conduct this trial. DSRCT stands for Desmoplastic Small Round Cell Tumor and this tumor has small round cells which are floating in some scar tissue or fibrous tissue and this is a disease which usually arises in young adults and adolescents, typically arises from the lining of the abdomen. This is an extremely rare disease. Uh, we think that there may be less than 50 patients per year diagnosed in the whole of the U.S. But at MSKCC, we see about, or at least we consult on about 30 patients per year. The tumor was actually described first by pathologists and clinicians who worked at Memorial. And that was in the very early 90s. And then other pathologists and other researchers in, at Memorial also found the genetic fusion that causes this tumor to arise in the first place. So that led to very basic research in DSRCT in the understanding of this disease. It can be a really challenging disease to treat. Uh, we know that initial treatment should be with chemotherapy and the role of chemotherapy to, is to shrink the DSRCT tumors. Uh, but chemotherapy doesn't always do the job or doesn't do the job enough. So then a surgeon has to go in and has to remove all the DSRCT tumors that are seen in the abdomen and that can be a very Herculean surgery, it can often take hours and the surgeon has to meticulously try to take every tumor out. Even after that, patients still have a very high chance of the DSRCT returning in the abdomen and so we now uh, treat our patients with radiation therapy after the surgery in an attempt to reduce the risk of relapse. In addition, we are testing a specific protocol which is attempting to further reduce the risk of relapse for DSRCT. What we are doing here is trying to inject this antibody which we are researching directly into the abdomen of patients. And the idea being that this antibody by reaching microscopic uh, areas of microscopic disease that cannot be targeted by chemotherapy and radiation can directly get rid of these microscopic mets and prevent relapse in the abdomen. So we've recently finished what's called a phase one study. That means we identified the right dose of antibody to give patients. Now we are, have embarked on what's called a phase two study in which we want to make sure that what we're doing is helping the patient. We've treated a bunch of patients in a design which is similar to what we will be treating the phase two. So we gave them, a patient underwent surgery, then underwent the antibody treatment, and then had the whole abdominal radiation. And that's going to be the design for the phase two study. We already have some preliminary data that this approach is safe, and very, very preliminary data that it's improved survivals. When I was first a trainee in the early 90s, I would see a lot of patients on the wards who are very, very sick with DSRCT. But now looking back 20 years later, things have really improved, although cure rates may not be where we want them to be. They are exposed to less toxic treatment. So we have our work cut out for us and we need to keep on thinking outside the box and trying to come up with new and better therapies for these patients. We have a very big team that, that's involved. And the great thing about working at MSK is that every person I meet or talk to or approach about various aspects of this trial is ever willing, is always willing to do what it takes. So as you can see, there's a huge number of people, probably many more people involved in the treatment than the number of patients that we see or treat. It's really been a pleasure to work with so many people in such close collaboration. I foresee that in the very near future, this technology will be exportable so that other centers can join us. It's such a rare disease that most patients and even most oncologists have never even heard of it or even seen it, a single case in their whole practice during their entire lifetime. When there's such a rare disease, uh, there are really no uh, government or even big philanthropic uh, organizations that are interested in doing anything for <clears throat> this disease, even studying uh, this disease further or leave alone coming up with therapeutic uh, 
interventions for this disease. So we are really, really fortunate that the Van Over Foundation and a couple of other small foundations have invested their time, efforts, and their support, even their moral support, into research into this disease, and that's really priceless. It just illustrates how even smaller foundations for very rare diseases can come together with people who are interested in researching these diseases and trying to improve outcomes. And this has been really invaluable. Our collaboration and partnership with the Vanova Foundation has been invaluable in us completing this trial and even thinking of starting a new trial. I'd like to thank the Stephen Van Hoer Foundation. Without them, this would absolutely not happen. I think their efforts have directly impacted patients in a very tangible way. Um, we do need to keep on uh, studying or thinking outside the box to treat patients with DSRCT. If uh, they had not invested in this trial, we would not be able to make the drug. We would not be able to treat patients. So, their impact has been very uh, tangible and extremely uh, has been priceless to the conduct of this trial. And I hope that we can continue to, to partner with them and allow more patients to be treated with this uh, uh, on this trial and on other trials that we may, we may come up with. <laughs>